in this case, we want to tell R that it's a plot. So we're saying a plot output. That's got to have some, the first argument is the name, and we're just going to call it dist plot, which is distribution plot. Could call it anything, but we need to remember that that's what we've called it because we're going to reference that when we start talking to the server. Does that all make sense? Okay. And then we just close our brackets, close, 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 happy days. We've now created this user interface UI object. Now we're gonna create the server object, right? So remember when we run the Shiny app, we have to have an object called server and the server is what comes from the user interface. It gets churned through the code that's required to make the graphic and then sends it back to the user interface as an output, right? So. Now, when we create the server, really what we're doing is we're creating a function, right? And I'm, I'm assuming that you're kind of familiar with creating functions. The fact that you're looking at Shiny means you're familiar with R. If you don't know how to create a function, you can go and look at videos that I've got on that. But effectively, assigned to this word here, server, using the function function to create a function that has two arguments, input and output. Okay, you don't need to worry about that too much. But here's here's what you just need to take note of. We open curly brackets. What's happening is we create output dist plot, uh, dollar sign dist plot. Remember we set up here when we were creating our user interface that the plot output was gonna be called a dist plot, right? So that's where that comes from. And we assign to that render plot. Now that's a new function. You, you've probably not heard of that before. It's just gonna basically say, you're gonna render the whatever plot we're gonna stick in, in the rest of this function. You're gonna render that with uh, and send that to an output called dist plot. Okay, it might be a little bit confusing, but once you've done this once or twice, you'll find it becomes easier. And everything else here is actually very straightforward because really what we've got here just is the code for a histogram. So hist, the x-axis of the histogram is faithful waiting, right? We've got that. Uh, breaks, and remember we said earlier that whatever a person puts on the slider, that's gonna be assigned to something called input dollar sign bins. Okay, we said that up here. We said the uh, slider input would be called bins and we would be able to fetch that with input dollar sign bins. So here we go, we've got the breaks in our histogram or input dollar sign bins. And then we say plus one, because if you say uh, you want 30 bins um, uh, and you put a 30, you actually need 31 breaks to make 30 bins, if that makes sense. So there's just a plus there just to make sure that you've got enough breaks to have enough bins in between them. If that That's how histograms work. Okay, uh, then it's just color, color, X label, main, blah, blah, nothing complicated about that. And we create this 